everybody. Welcome back. I'm excited. My studio is finished and I'm pretty much ready to get back into making tutorials. However, I want to give you a little heads up. Um, this channel is still going to be dedicated to technique, tutorials, instructional videos, but I do want to add an element of raising awareness because since March, I have been diagnosed with a whole lot of crap. <laughs> and I'm not saying this because I want like attention or pity. That's not really true. I'm letting you know because there are very few uh, outlets and social media platforms that talk about dancing with like hidden illnesses or like invisible disabilities, chronic illnesses, there, there is very little out there as far as coping with these, you know, day to day feelings of your body failing you and still getting through it and still being able to dance. They don't really make instructional videos. You know, they'll blog or journal or document all the things that they experience throughout the day. But I'm having trouble finding somebody who keeps these disabilities in mind while teaching ballet. There are not a lot of ballet teachers, ballet schools, ballet companies, ballet resources that can accommodate for these different bodies that exist. And I feel like because of that, we are missing out on a lot of dancers. I think there are a lot of people out there that really wanted to be dancers and never reached their full potential because the dance world was too unforgiving by not being open-minded, by not being understanding of these different bodies. The dance teacher says I'm too lazy and I'm not strong enough. The ballet school says that I'm not ready. The choreographer says I don't move the right way. I have this pain and I don't know what's going on and it gets worse when I dance, so I guess I just have to stop dancing. I want to be the resource that I needed this year. I still want to share my knowledge with you. I still want to teach and give you instructional videos and tutorials. I want to choreograph one day, but I want all bodies to be able to do it, which is why today I am starting with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, specifically hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. And I'm starting with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome because even though it is still technically a rare disorder, it is the one that is starting to get noticed more in the ballet world. Because a lot of the people that are attracted to dance are naturally flexible. A lot of the things that dance requires comes naturally to them. But the unfortunate thing is they might have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and not even realize it until way later. And by the time they hit the age where they're supposed to be at their peak, that's when it all catches up with them and things just kind of start malfunctioning and hurting and they don't know what's going on. I was in the same situation. I went through most of my teens and 20s thinking, Wow, this is great, like ballet just comes so naturally to me, this is so easy. I hardly have to put in any effort to achieve this mobility. But then once I hit my late 20s, things just started malfunctioning, like things just were not working anymore. And I'm going, what gives? I was able to do this yesterday, why is it suddenly impossible? You know, it catches up to you and age makes everything worse. And because you didn't know you had this problem until it was too late, you didn't take the proper steps and proper precautions and or do the proper strength training to help protect your body from experiencing these symptoms. So now what do we do? So the first thing that I really want to put out there, because somebody out there may need to hear it, I wish somebody told me this five, six years ago when my body started malfunctioning. A hypermobile body has to work like twice as hard to go half as far. And I know it's not fair. Hypermobile bodies are going to struggle with certain things that come very easily to other dancers that don't have this rare connective tissue disorder. And I actually brought a little prop to help me explain it. So imagine your body is like a Jenga tower. 
normal, quote, normal, normal people who do not have this rare connective tissue disorder have a regular Jenga tower as if you first started playing. Nobody's played anything yet. It's compact, it's together, all the pieces are touching, everything is nice and stacked and stable. You know, you can move this around, you can do a pirouette, you can move it around really fast without much of a problem. This is what it's like to have a normal body. But if you have hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, you have this connective tissue disorder, which means you've been playing Jenga for like five minutes already. People with hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome have a connective tissue disorder. There is a genetic defect in their collagen. So their collagen is not structured right. There are gaps in it, there's defects in it, it's just not structured in a way that holds everything together. You're more prone to elasticity, spaces in between your joints, things are stretchier, and while that is very beautiful for ballet, and while that gives you a fantastic advantage when it comes to flexibility, it's not stable anymore. And of course, as you get older, more and more wear and tear, more and more disintegration or degeneration of your collagen and your connective tissue, you sprain and re-sprain the same ankle and it never really heals, your muscles are doing double duty. Your muscles are trying to compensate for your weak ligaments, so your muscles fatigue faster than the average normal person. So what do you do with this? This is so unstable. How are you supposed to dance like that? So if you're a younger dancer and you're realizing that you just naturally seem to be more flexible than your friends, even in weird parts of your body that you don't stretch every day, like your thumbs, you could have a genetic defect. And that means you have to start cross-training now. You have to start fortifying your body and protecting it now. You have to start changing the way you think about ballet movement now, because the way ballet is taught does not accommodate for these different bodies. You know, a teacher will tell a normal body to stretch all day, stretch, stretch, stretch. And in a normal body, great, they're stretching their muscles, they're getting more flexible. But in somebody with this genetic defect, with this connective tissue disorder, with these weak ligaments, you're just putting more damage on your ligaments. And right now it feels easy, and right now it's not a problem, but by the time you hit your 20s, when you're supposed to be at your peak, you're going to realize things are hurting now. I'm supposed to be at my strongest, and yet I feel weaker. My body is not cooperating. What's going on? So it's important to maybe get tested by a genetic counselor. It's important to find somebody that specializes in hypermobile dancers. I am not a doctor. I am not a physical therapist. Steve's cutting the grass. Can you hear the lawnmower? There's a lot of grass to cut out here. So while I am not a doctor, I am not a physical therapist, I cannot give you medical advice. I can guide you and give you my personal tips and my personal notes and things that have been taught to me so that you are working as safe as possible. And to get some longevity out of your body, we want you to have a long, healthy career. We need more diverse dancers. So this video is getting pretty long, I think I'm gonna cut it here, but I just wanted to give you like an introduction and let you know that this is one of the many things that I'm going to be talking about in the future when I give technique tutorials. So now we have the normal way to do it, the way that ballet is taught to normal bodies, and then there's also the hypermobile way that you have to keep in mind if you're struggling with this issue. And I will definitely insert those tips as we continue on this glorious ballet YouTube channel. And as you can see, I have listed all of my diagnoses here. I am very transparent about everything I am going through. I'm putting this list here because I want you to let me know in the comments 
which one you might be struggling with, which one you want to hear more about. You know, do any of these stand out to you and you're really like, oh man, I think I have that. Or, holy hell, how am I supposed to dance when I have that kind of thing going on? Ask me. If you've never heard of one of these before and you want to know more about it, if you're looking at this list and wondering, well, how would that one have anything to do with ballet? How does one affect the other? Like, let me know. I've been out of the loop for a long time. I kind of lost my to-do list of all the questions that everybody had, so we kind of got to start from scratch. So let me know down here and I will do my best to explain all of these things within a safe and diverse learning environment for all different bodies of all different types of conditions. So thank you so much. Thank you for sticking with me during this long, crazy hiatus, but I'm finally moved in. I finally got my studio just perfect the way I want it. Finally ready to jump back in. Welcome back. I love you all and I will see you soon and stay f***ing salty.